In this video, I'm going to introduce features. So why do we need features? Well, we want to think about sounds as being a bundle of features, and we represent all of these features of sounds in a feature matrix. So for instance, the B, we don't think of it necessarily in phonology as a voiced bilabial stop. That doesn't give us enough information about the properties of the sounds and how those properties can interact with other sounds around it. Instead, we want to think of things like, oh, this B is not syllabic. It is not sonorous. It is a stop. It is not a nasal. It is labial. It does have voice. So we can represent all those things in what we call a feature matrix. And I mentioned here that we're going to revise plus stop and plus labial because we don't necessarily use those, but for the sake of demonstration, it is a good thing just to have to kind of get the idea of what we're going for. And these feature matrices will help when we talk about allophonic variation and rules. So for instance, we've already seen that the alveolar n becomes dentalized before dental fricatives. So maybe there's some feature of a dental fricative that we could say spread to the N and then that causes the N to be dentalized. So if we have features, uh, when we get to feature geometry in the future, we can talk about some sort of spreading like that. Uh, but even for rule-based phonology, which is what we'll start with, uh, features are a good way of narrowing down groups of sounds that undergo the same process. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take these phonetic classes and phonetic descriptions and turn them into natural classes. So here I already have five natural classes listed. Vowels, glides, liquids, nasals, and obstruents. So obstruents would be things like stops, fricatives, and affricates. Essentially they're everything that's not listed as vowels, glides, liquids, and nasals. And we have four main features that we can use to distinguish between all these different natural classes. So for instance, if I want to talk about vowels, I could say, well, vowels are plus syllabic, minus consonantal, plus approximant, and plus sonorant. If I want to talk about liquids, I could say they're minus syllabic, plus consonantal, plus approximant, and plus sonorant. Okay, so first of all, what do these four features mean? Well, Plus syllabic just means it can function as the nucleus of a syllable, meaning that syllables are built around these sounds. And typically, these are just vowels. So vowels are plus syllabic. There are some special cases in a word like bottle and in a word like button where the ol and the n, which are liquids and nasals, become syllabic. In other words, the syllables are built around. We call these syllabic l's or syllabic n's. Uh, but we'll ignore them for the sake of the chart. But if you were to say, oh, what is the feature of a syllabic L? You'd say it's plus syllabic. So that's what syllabic is. In fact, if we want to talk about just vowels, because vowels are the only thing that's plus syllabic, we can just define vowels as the natural class of plus syllabic sounds. So we don't need to add minus consonantal plus approximate plus sonorant because that's redundant. Okay, so that's plus syllabic. What about consonantal? Well, a sound is plus consonantal if there's constriction in the vocal tract. So liquids, ol, er, you know there's constriction there. Nasals, very clearly, uh, air doesn't go through the vocal tract at all, it goes through the nasal cavity. So there's an obstruction there. And obstruents, stops, fricatives, affricates. Uh, it's either very tightly constricted or it's closed completely, and that is an obstruction. So if there is an obstruction, it is plus consonantal. If there's no obstruction, such as an E or Y, then it's minus consonantal. Okay, what about approximant? Well, approximant just includes vowels, glides, and liquids. It does not include nasals and obstruents. So it's kind of similar to consonant. In fact, we say, well, if it's minus approximant, then there is some obstruction or very close obstruction. Uh, but in the case of liquids like ol and er, uh, there's not as much obstruction there. So this is plus approximate. In other words, it's really just a category that we can use to help separate uh, liquids and nasals and glides in terms of the features. So for instance, if I want to talk about just liquids, 
I could say, well, these are the plus consonants plus approximants. If I didn't have plus approximate, I might have to say plus consonantal plus sonorants, but then that confuses the liquids with the nasals. I could say, well, it's uh, minus syllabic plus consonantal, but again, I'm confusing it again. So approximate is a pretty good term that we use to separate liquids from the nasals. Finally, plus or minus sonorant. Well, we can think as minus sonorant just having a noticeable turbulence in the oral cavity. So in other words, there is absolute obstruction in the oral cavity. Uh, so in the cases of nasals, so there's no imbalance of air pressure in the vocal tract that may cause turbulence. So in other words, mm, there isn't a release of air in the mouth. There's no turbulence being caused by the mm because the air is going through the nose. While in t, well, we have the turbulence at the release of the t. In b, again, we have that turbulence, the release. In fricatives, of course, we have turbulence there. So uh, minus sonorants, we can think of minus sonorant being obstruents. So if we want to talk about obstruents, we can just write minus sonorant. Okay, so here's a question. I want to classify the nasal sounds using these four features, but without being redundant. How do I do that? Well, one way we can do it is just kind of to draw a line here, and we can think, okay, which two, three, or four features can we use to just classify these sounds? And what I see right here is I can think of nasals. Well, nasals are minus approximate. And if I just write minus approximate, well, that's the natural class of nasals and obstruents. But I want to get rid of the obstruents, and I say, well, if nasals are sonorant, obstruents are not. So this would be plus sonorant. So if I just want to talk about nasals, I could talk about the minus approximate plus sonorant feature bundle. Of course, we also have plus nasal that we could just write, and that would be good enough on its own. Uh, but for the sake of these four features, we could say minus approximate plus sonorant. Okay, these are four pretty important features for talking about all these big natural classes. But we want to dive into the obstruents, and we want to say, how do we separate stops, affricates, and fricatives? Well, we have plus minus continuant and plus minus delayed release. So we can say that a sound is minus continuance if there's a full closure in the oral tract. In other words, full closure, meaning that it's not essentially a fricative. We can think of fricative as being plus continuant because air is continuously going out. S continuous airflow. So plus continuant would be continuous airflow. Minus continuant, like in ch, the affricate, or p, there's clearly a full closure in the vocal tract there. So if we look at the chart, minus continuum being stops and affricates, plus continuum being fricatives. So if I want to talk about the natural class of fricatives, I could say it's minus stonorant to get it into the obstruents, and plus continuant to get it to narrow down to the fricatives. Minus, so plus or minus delayed release, we say it's minus delayed release if there's no frication noise. Now, this is kind of hard to wrap your head around first, but think of stops, p, b, there's not a single moment of continuous airflow. There's no uh, tightly constricted sound. There's no tightly constricted airflow. It's just p or b. Now, sh, well, of course, there's frication there. But what about ch, ch, ch? We hear in the affricate, we can hear that frication. I mean, there's a reason ch is spelt with the stop and then the fricative linked together because there is that frication at the end there. So when there is a delayed release, that means that essentially there is a delayed release of that frication sound. So there is some frication there. It's not just an immediate release. There is some delayed release which causes frication. So if I want to talk about stops, I can talk about minus continuant minus delayed release. If I want to talk about affricates, I could say minus continuant plus delayed release. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at those manner features for consonants, Let's look at some sounds and say whether they're plus or minus all of these features. So the first one I have is y. This is the glide y. First one, is it consonantal? Y. No, it's not. There's no obstruction in the vocal tract here. It's just a y. What about, is it syllabic? Well, only vowels are syllabic. And then, of course, the syllabic l and r or n, which can occur 
but we'll ignore that for now. So y is a glide, it is not syllabic. Is it sonorant? Okay, well the only thing that isn't sonorant are obstruents, and y is not a fricative, stop, or affricate, so it is sonorant. Now here's the question, is y continuous? So is it a continuant? And let's think about that. In fact, we can just try to hold that sound, y, y, y. That is definitely a continuant. So this is, yes, glides are also continuants. So the only thing that aren't continuants would be stops and affricates. So plus continuant sound, we could say that y is continuant, o is continuant, er is continuant. So that's y. What about s? Well, s, it is consonantal. Is it syllabic? Is s ever the nucleus of a syllable? No. Is it sonorant? Well, it's an obstruent, so no. Is it continuant? S, yes, it is continuant. Okay, k. K is a consonantal, yes. Is k syllabic? No. It's a consonant, it's an obstruent. Is it sonorant? No. It is an obstruent. Is k continuous? K. No. It is not continuous. So those were some features for three sounds. Of course, we could talk about all of them. We could say is it plus minus approximate? Is it plus minus delayed release? Um, but these are definitely the most or the, the more common features you would use. So it's good to drill these in. If you'd like a full list of features outside of the video, if you just type in phonological feature chart into Google, you will see tons and they list all of the features. So you can have a sound, it'll list all 20, 30 or so features and give you plus or minus values for each of them for each sound. If you have any questions about these, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them.